All right, so Acts chapter 4. We're going to start in Acts chapter 4. We'll go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to preach your word. I uh, pray, Lord God, that you would just fill me with boldness and help me to preach uh, what you would have uh, these gentlemen to hear, Lord. And I love you and thank you for everything you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, we're going to begin in verse 7. The Bible reads, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power, by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. The title of my sermon is Pray for Boldness. And I want to focus on that part where it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They marveled. Peter and John were not weak. They weren't timid. They were bold. All right? Stay right there. I'm going to read from you in Isaiah 61, 1, the first part of that verse. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. So, you know, God would have us to be bold. Now, we're going to talk about uh, first what, what boldness is not. Okay, boldness is not being a loud mouth know it all. That's not boldness, right? Boldness is not being unruly and uncivil. Right. Boldness is not going around and being a jerk to people for no reason. You study the life of Paul and that's not how he conducted himself at all. You know, Paul stood on the truths of the Bible, but he didn't just go around like, uh, you know, have these people that are like street preachers per se. And they just want to go and they want to talk about, you know, how wicked you are. You know, we go, we knock on doors and we explain to people, hey, the Bible says that we're all liars. They just want to like focus on your worst sins, you know, like, look how disgusting you are. You know, they just want to focus on, you know, just the worst things, as opposed to just getting the point across that we're all sinners and we all need to be saved. And they just demonize people and, and, and they want to, to seem righteous unto them. You know, that's not boldness. That's not the boldness that we see in the Bible. But on the other end, you also have these so-called Christians that, that go around and, and they want to, they basically think that, you know, when you're being bold, when you're standing on the truths of the Bible, that you're being arrogant. You know, let's say, well, you're arrogant, you're puffed up, you know, you're filled with pride. And it's the Christianity of America, you know, that, that's allowed this new age, positive only message to come in to where it's like nothing negative could possibly be of God. As if God doesn't hate people. As if God, you know, doesn't send people to hell. You know, they just, when you start to preach the truths of the Bible, there's that other side that, you know, they just, they, they don't want to hear that. So, they're not being bold, and they want to knock you for being bold. But I want, to know, I want you to notice, look at verse 7 again in Acts chapter 4. It says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then... Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Right? So he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, just to get a better idea real quick of what their situation is, right? Paul and John, said, or uh, it says uh, in verse 1, And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. And it came to pass on them all that their rulers and elders and scribes, and Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. So they're surrounded by people that are in opposition to their position. 
And notice that they're filled with boldness, they're filled with the Holy Ghost, and they're preaching with power. They don't care what the circumstances are. They're going to stand on the truths of the Bible. And that's what kind of boldness the Bible tells us to have. Once again, it's not being a loud mouth. It's not being a know-it-all. But when you stand on God's perfect Word and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter what your situations are. Uh, I was looking uh, just yesterday. I saw this thing that came on my feed. And, and a lot of times, you know, we have this, this American idea of, of what it means to be a Christian. And I was just, look, there was like this compound that this... There was like these couple of Christians in. I don't know if these people are saved or anything like that, but there was just this Muslim, like Islam mob outside of this compound, and they're just like shaking the they're like shaking this fence. They're trying to get in. And they end up breaking in, and people are just like throwing rocks at these supposed Christians. And these guys are trying to fight back, you know, just trying to fend them off. You know, we don't deal with that in America. But I'm sitting there thinking about how bold these people are that they would that they would stand for the word of God even though they're not, you know, it's it's a physical threat. You know, they're in there and they're trying to withstand these people and they're not afraid, they're not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Serena, get out of here. And so, they're filled with the Holy Ghost and the power of God and they are bold. So, you know what, I, one of the things that we need to pray for is, you know, sometimes we can even, as Christians in America, we can, we can get to this point where we start to get a little timid. One of the things that I always pray for when I, before I knock on someone's door is I, I silently pray and ask God to fill me with His Spirit. And I ask Him to fill me with boldness and not to be ashamed. I don't want to be ashamed of the gospel. I don't want to care if you think that I'm a nuisance, that I'm at your door. I'm here to deliver you a message because that's what Jesus commanded me to do. And sometimes, I'm going to be honest, sometimes you, you, you can be a little timid. And you got to knock that first door and you got to get the rust off, you know, and then you're ready to go. But I always pray for boldness and power, Amen. you know, because, you know, we live in America and, and sometimes the things that we think are hard, that's not hard to a lot of other Christians in this world. So in Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, the Bible says, Praying always with all power and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Verse 19, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Paul, in his epistle to the Ephesians, is talking about the importance of being bold. Pray for me that I wouldn't be timid. Pray for me that I would preach with power. Pray for me that I would open my mouth boldly. Just one page over in Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible reads, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much bold to speak the word without fear. They're much more bold to speak the word without fear. So notice how being bold is coupled with being without fear. Notice how Paul's confidence has inspired others to be confident and preach with boldness. Say, Brother Russell, how do I get boldness? You pray. You pray for boldness. You ask the Lord to fill you with the Spirit and to make you, you know, uh, you know bold to preach His Word. And you, you also pray for others. You know, I can't tell you how many times where I prayed for the brethren at the door. Hey, Lord, please give them the courage to say what needs to be said to this person. You know, because that's what we should be doing as silent partners is praying that, you know, your brother would be bold and they would tell this person what they need to, what needs to be said in order for them to get saved. I'm going to go through a, a, a real quick um, flurry here. Acts chapter 13, you don't have to turn here, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Paul and Barnabas they're bold. Acts chapter 19, verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Acts 9, uh, verse 27. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached 
boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Verse 29, And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. These are real, these are real things that Paul is struggling with, but notice how he still speaks boldly. You know, John 7, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, below, he speaketh boldly. And they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know unto either this is the very Christ? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. If you pray, God will give you that power. So I want to end right here in Acts chapter 4, where we were. Verse 29 says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Grant unto thy servants, and with all boldness they may speak thy word. That with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that its signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Brethren, pray for boldness. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to preach your word. I pray that you would just help fill all these men with boldness as they preach. I, f I pray that you would fill us all with boldness as we go out and preach your gospel. And uh, we just love you and thank you for everything you've given us in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>